Good afternoon um, from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Dr. Ziai. I'm a neurointensivist at the Johns Hopkins University. And I'm here with one of our patients, Sam, and his mom. And today we're going to discuss uh, Sam's injury, his coma, and his recovery from coma that he's been experiencing. And um, I'd like to go and first talk about what happened to Sam. So he is a 22-year-old college graduate who previously was completely healthy. And he sustained a severe traumatic brain injury in late October of 2022 while he was uh, stopped, uh, while he was on a scooter. He was hit by a car. He sustained a severe right subdural hematoma uh, with uncle herniation. He had bilateral frontal contusions, uh, traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage, and bilateral skull fractures. It was really a very severe injury. And he was in a coma with us for many, many weeks in our neurointensive care unit. He underwent an emergent right hemicraniectomy at an outside hospital before coming to us. And then he had further complications with a right internal carotid artery dissection and a right middle cerebral artery stroke. And so I'm describing his injury in some detail to help with appreciating the remarkable recovery that this young man has had so far. So he was discharged to rehabilitation in Boston in early January. And then he unfortunately developed hydrocephalus and while he was in rehab and he was transferred back to our center in early February for shunt placement. So I'm here today with, with Sam and his mom, and I'm going to talk a little bit with Sam and a little bit about his recovery. So here's mom, and, and here's Sam. Hi, Sam. Can you open your eyes a little bit? So Sam, you want to wake up? Open your eyes, Sam. Look at the, look at the Zoom. So while we're waiting for Sam to wake up a little, I maybe would like to ask mom a few questions. First of all, can you just tell us about your, your first impression when you saw Sam, when this happened? Uh, what were you told at the time? And how did you feel about the information that, that was given to you? Um, so I was called um, somewhat er emergently by the police that my son was in an emergency room and it wasn't clear what had happened. I have the benefit of being the physician, so I think that gave me a tremendous uh, leg up on trying to get information or heard that he suffered a severe head injury. Um, and then when I got there, he had already had had surgery since time is of the essence when you have such a severe injury. And when I got there, he was... Uh, um, you know, intubated, unresponsive, and it was uh, an extremely difficult situation. And I think you go into shock a little bit um, because even as a physician and you treated patients like this, you are dealing with your son. And I think um, you're just in shock and you things go in and people are talking to you, but it's very hard to get all, take all the information in and understand what that means and what decisions need to be made next. I was fortunate to have people around me that came very quickly uh, that were in the medical profession and understood the medical profession so that I could make decisions quickly to have him transferred to a situation where he could potentially uh, have the medical, advanced medical uh interventions that would need, he would need to survive such a traumatic injury. Um, that's not necessarily true in all circumstances, but in his circumstance, being at a world-renowned place like Hopkins was necessary for him to uh, be where we are now. Can you tell us a little bit about the type of decisions that you were being asked to consider at the time that he came in? Um, Unfortunately, you know, I, I, it's, it's a little bit of a blank, but I remember being shown the CT because I was a physician. So they showed me CTs, the uh, amount of uh, injury um, was, you know, uh, catastrophic, but I, I wasn't really asked to make decisions. It was sort of life support, all hands on deck. But I noticed that they were giving him a lot of medicine and that uh, he it was needing life support type medicines. And I knew that they said he was too um, severely injured to be transferred, which wasn't ne necessarily the case, but it was said with very definite. So I think having people to 
bounce ideas off of and, and, and think about it was, was extremely helpful to both Sam and myself. Um, and, and having uh, a, another person there so that, because it's too much sometimes to take in all at once. Sometimes, unfortunately, that's the only circumstance that you're in. And I feel for those people who have uh, just to make those decisions, but the decisions would be sort of, um, you know, what do you want us to do in terms of medicine or if he's unresponsive and, and things like that. But I, I fortunately focused on what was the next step? How could we potentially ameliorate, make this situation better in any way? And for me, it was about, uh, is there, are there some place I could get him that would make this all better in some way? Yeah, and I should mention that, that Sam was in a pentobarb coma for several weeks for um, intracranial hypertension. And so he was really in a comatose uh, situation for about um, maybe seven or eight weeks um, yeah. before he started to wake up. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about how it went after that when, when things started to improve a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think the pentobarb coma, though, can't be underestimated. And I think there you're, you're fighting... Um, I found myself becoming a little bit, you know, and this is again, maybe unique to being a physician or, or in, in that network, but um, a lot of complications happen and you have to be uh, able to just go day by day and not think about the long haul you have to deal with every, every day. And you find that, that, that helped me in the whole picture of it, because if you just go day to day, it, it makes it easier than to try to be overwhelmed by the whole situation. After the pinto or coma, it wasn't clear how much of Sam, the essence of Sam, uh, was going to come back. And that was the key for us, is to have the the Samness of Sam uh, be back and to have him speak and communicate with us in, in some way. And to be honest with you, it wasn't clear that that would happen until it was somewhat, we called it somewhat of a miracle on December 25th or the eighth day of Hanukkah, whatever. He uh, had a trach in a peg by then, which is a gastro feeding tube because he wasn't able to eat on his on his own. And uh, he said two things to me uh, when we occluded the trach, which was gave him the ability to speak. And he was blinking somewhat, and he was communicating, but very minor amount, like with blinking. But he basically said, "I love you," and do I have to testify? And when he said those things, it was so shocking because he had been sort of like what you're seeing, you know, he, when he doesn't want to talk he, or you're not sure, he's just eyes closed sleeping most of the day. So you're not sure what's going on inside. One of the things that we did, though, is that we read to him throughout the entire coma state, entire every night. We read to him Harry Potter, which was something that he loved as a as a child and adolescent and that gave us comfort, but it also, I think, gave some stimulation, at least according to some of the things I read. So reading to him, even though there was no response and you're reading, you think you're reading is pointless and people have said, why are you reading? Um, I, I think it helped both of us get through this. Thank you. Wow, that's um, that's really an incredible story. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what Sam is able to do now so that the folks in the audience understand what his recovery has been like? Because um, I know he went to rehab. Yeah, and you know, really, Sam was yeah. remarkable. Um, you know, the rapidity with which he got back language. He speaks several languages and he speaks in Spanish and he responded in, in Spanish fluently. So he got his language back very quickly and he had his trach removed and he can speak um, in, in rehab before the hydrocephalus. And we took care of that. But he was able to speak in full sentences. He was able to eat uh soft foods. He was able to participate uh, in a very rigorous uh, rehabilitation program, which means like three, four hours of being on a diaper, you know, being uh, walking with this, walking with a real, a lot lot of assistance, but being on a bicycle where one foot pushed the other foot. Um, He is, has weakness in the left leg that is profound, but he, he, we found that he was able to move and use his left hand, although not as well as his right. And he was able to wash his face. And uh, basically, Sam was back and he could give some uh, of, of his own thoughts. And, and and we thought, you know, it was tremendous. Yeah, and I think for, um, you know, for the physicians out there, when you see 
the patients come back. Uh, we were very fortunate that Sam came back for, you know, well, an unfortunate complication. But when we saw him come back, it was it was just remarkable the amount of recovery he had made. And we, we often don't get to see that recovery in our patients because they, they don't come back to us. Um, maybe I could ask you, you know, for the families out there whose kids have experienced coma, what would you say to them? I would say um, don't give up hope. I would say um, ask as many questions as you can about how to evaluate whether how the coma, you know, what degree of coma there is and what degree of uh, function might be underneath the coma because there's more and more information about coma being just the state uh, where, but there's a lot of brain function underneath that coma, which I guess alluded to with the reading. And I, I think that that hope is, 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 is what keeps you going. And, um, but always being willing to ask other opinions and uh, other professionals for opinions and not hesitating to do that um, is critical. Sam? Sam? Do you want to open up your eyes? Sam, squeeze my hand. Now open up your eyes really big and look at the picture and tell them what you're thinking about where you are. You look at that smile. <laughs> look at that smile, Sam. Well, I'll say that Sam yeah. has had two surgeries in the last week. So he's uh, he has been through a lot. Sam, and what do you have to say? Como se siento? How do you feel? Okay. You're okay? Yeah. Do you want to, let me get you one of these things just to wet your face so they can have you speak. What do you want to say about what you've been through? Hmm? How do you feel now? Sam, do you feel like you're getting better? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we certainly are impressed. Um, you know, maybe I can finish by asking you what you'd like to tell the doctors out there about taking care of patients like Sam. Well, I think patience and uh, understanding that this is a marathon, not a sprint. I know people use that expression a lot, but you don't really realize it until you're measuring things in months and weeks, not days. Um, and even a day like today where he may not open his eyes as quickly as you'd like, or he does, which he is now. Um, you need to be patient and um, understanding and take notes on what he's doing and how he's doing so that you can tell the doctors because everything fluctuates and it's not a continuous uh, straight line to improvement. It's peaks and troughs and plateaus. And so it's a journey um, that's often like described as a roller coaster. And I think um, Sam has been on that roller coaster for a while, but is looking forward to finishing his journey. And that's him picking his leg, which just shows you how much he's awake. But now, Sam, why don't you talk? Go ahead. What do you think? Hmm? Sam, he wants to control the camera. Sam, why don't you say something? Not... Hmm? Why don't you say something to the Zoom? You've been a lot on Zoom in your life. What do you want to say? Hmm? What do you want to say to other patients or other families? Hmm? Do you want to tell them to be patient? Mm -hmm. What else do you want to tell them? Mm -hmm. That you what? Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. That's that. That's really um, encouraging, and I think that that's a great message to take back. That we really have to listen to the patients and and what their wishes are, and you know, Sam's really. He's having a, <laughs> a bit sleepy today, but uh, he, he's been through so much and he's really maintained such a positive mm -hmm. attitude and made so many strides towards his recovery. 
Do you want to give a wave to everybody? And I'm certainly encouraged that when we, if we were to talk to Sam in a month, we would, uh, you know, see significant improvement again. And uh, we're certainly hopeful that he's going to get back into rehab soon and uh, get back on his trajectory to recovery. But uh, I want to thank you, Sam and Mom, for giving us the opportunity to talk with you. And we really appreciate this. It's it, our pleasure. It means so much to us and the community for us to see how patients recover. Yeah. Okay. Sam, do you want to say anything in final? What do you want to say to everybody? Keep on trying or to have, mm -hmm. be strong. Mm -hmm. Say it then. Be strong. All right. Thanks, Sam. And thanks, thanks everyone.